Welcome to Hadouken Debt Podcast, episode number 89. If you need some help budgeting, or if you need to start, or if you've been doing it for years and you need a new way to do it, then check out Mint. It's an online budgeting software tool powered by Intuit. It's free, it's safe and secure, and it is so simple to use. So if you're just tired of not knowing where your money is going every month and you wonder why you don't have any, or you just need to just get a status update of your money, then go to mint.com, make an account, and it'll take you through all the steps and you just go from there. So you just have to give every dollar a name and a purpose because if you don't, then it'll just vanish and you'll just spend it on something and you'll wonder where it went. That's what old Dave Ramsey teaches us. So that's my advertisement and budgeting spiel for now. So anyway, in our main topic today, in our episode today, we're going to talk about how important role models are and how important mentors are. We say who they are in our life, life, me and Barrett's life. And then we talk about how important friends are too. We get a little bit into that. And then in our nerd talk, we just have a nerd toss up. So we just talk about anything that's on our mind and like I talk about Street Fighter and some uh, Japanese RPGs and mobile gaming, all that kind of stuff. So anyway, here we go. Episode number 89. I can't believe it's like 11 more episodes until 100. That's crazy. So here we go. Episode number 88. No, not 88. 89. See? Ah, crap. Anyway going to talk about role models, mentors, and our nerdful toss-up. Like I said, we're not doing uh, four episodes. Yeah. Because it's like, um, how are you again? Uh, I'm good. <laughs> so, uh, how are your plants doing? Yeah. That's what I want to know. My plants? Yeah. Um, Did you ever keep that app going? Nope. They're all dead. <laughs> They're all dead. <laughs> Did you give it a good week, at least? Yeah, two, I did. Two days? <laughs> yeah, I did. I deleted it. Yeah? Did you? Yeah. Nice. I drink, like six of these a day Mm -hmm. so i don't know how many these are probably like 18 20 20 ounces yeah cool yeah i had to start over when i got a new phone so my plants didn't i hadn't linked them to my yeah uh google play account or anything so i had to redo everything so do you like that phone though yeah 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 can you see a difference or not really um screen I've got the S7 now, is what Charlie's talking about. So my S5 got soaked on a rafting trip. um, And I tried to boot it up too soon before it was fully dry, is what I think happened to it. So I had to upgrade to the S7, which I had to (laughs) plan on doing anyways. But now Sarah has one too, so we both have S7s. Is that her uh, first smartphone? Uh, Yeah, really. I mean, she had track phones. They had screens, but she, and I, they did have Play, the Google Play Store, so they mm-hmm. had access to apps, but it was so slow that she never used that many of them. So she was excited because it's twice as big of a screen <laughs> as the one that she used to have. Yeah. So I'm not... The resolution is a lot better. The camera is better. The battery doesn't seem to be any faster or longer lasting, but I've also been playing Pokemon. <laughs> so maybe my S5 couldn't even even boot it up yeah, yeah. to start doing Pokemon. Uh-huh. The thing I'm disappointed about is the S5 was the only version that Samsung had that had a USB 3 charging cable. 
Oh. And then the 6 went back to the USB 2.0 charging cable. Why, why would they go back? Because people weren't... People didn't like the, S, the USB 3. But the thing about it was... It was so fast yeah. to charge my phone. My F- S5 could have gone from 9% to 100% in like 40 minutes. That's awesome. And this takes like an hour and a half to charge fully. Mm. It sucks so <laughs> bad. I'm like so slow. Yeah. I'm like, of course people didn't like it. Change is bad. Yeah. Even though the S5 was fully backward compatible, the way that they had designed the USB cable, I could use the old kind, which are really thin, or yeah. I could use the new kind. It didn't matter. It just charged faster when I had the new one plugged right. into it. But now they've gone back and you can't use the bigger one at all. And I'm so upset about it. Mm. The other thing I've noticed is this runs a lot hotter than my phone used to. So I have a I use Clean Master on it to um, clean up old files and cool it down and shut down stuff that's not running and mm-hmm. stuff. Um, and I think my old phone used to run at an average temp of around like 115 to 120 degrees. Running Pokemon Go and plugged into a charger, it's this thing's <laughs> running over 140 degrees. Jeez. And I'm like, that can't be good. For nah. me. This thing sucks at cooling. <laughs> so I've just realized like charging and playing Pokemon at the exact same time is yeah. probably going to fry my <laughs> computer. Then but it gets hot, like it like yeah. hurts my hand, yep. kind of hot. So, did you um, do any research on the T-Mobile anymore, or just kind of had the idea? And- I mean, I knew that Verizon was really the best bet in Southern Maryland. I would have loved to have unlimited streaming. <laughs> that would have been nice. Yeah. Um, but I don't. It wasn't worth not having connectivity so right we just went with verizon in the end so we've got eight gigs a month between the two of us and we use it entirely almost almost entirely on wi-fi at home anyway so i'll watch our use i'll watch our usage for the first couple months and see if we're even using that Mm. and i'll downgrade it to four if i can yeah so we have three gigs shared Mm -hmm. because i'd never because Verizon keeps trying to push me to the small, medium, large yeah, plans. Yeah, new thing that they Yeah, have. but the small print I read was I can't get the phone at discount anymore. So, because mm-hmm. I used to only pay 200 for a new iPhone. Mm-hmm. And there was no extra $30 on my bill. Mm-hmm. It was just $200 for an iPhone. Right. So, I'm not changing. <laughs> so I mean, you can buy them outright. Yeah. But they're the full price. Kind yeah, of it's thing. like 800 bucks. Yeah, but I liked uh, AT and T because Directv keeps sending me all these like deals. We'll give you you know f- all the channels f- for fifty bucks mm-hmm. and a two hundred dollar Visa card, and then you can get unlimited AT and T data. Mm-hmm. So maybe down the line. Mm-hmm. But the thing I liked about Verizon's new plans that they have is they finally started doing rollover data. Oh, really? So they do roll-up, Dave? Yeah. So the small, medium, large thing that they were trying to sell you oh. on, if you don't use it, it carries over in the next month. So you can stack up, like... I don't know if it rolls over month to month to month or how it works. Right, right. Um, but, yeah, it says that it's rollover. They say you never lose your data. Hmm. So I'm like, that's pretty sweet. That is pretty cool. <laughs> so on months when I paid for eight gigs and we only used six, I've right. now got those two carried over. So. Yeah. So I've been waiting for that. I think that's the first time I've seen that on a cell phone plan. Because mm-hmm. um, they used to do that with minutes, but who cares about minutes know. nowadays? So yeah, texting's free. Minutes are free. Right. That wasn't even in the equation for these plans. <laughs> yeah, and minutes I don't care because I don't call anybody. Yeah. And texting I just use Facebook Messenger. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I'm using data on my phone or at mm-hmm. my house. The thing that I do like about this that's different, because I had Virgin before, Mm -hmm. and it was an S5. The only thing that was limited on it is you have to pay extra on Virgin if you want to use it as a hotspot. Mm. So it's an extra 20 bucks a month, because I had unlimited data on Virgin. It wasn't wasn't the Verizon network, it was Sprint. Yeah. But I couldn't use it as a hotspot. This I can use as a hotspot. You can? Which is pretty cool. Okay. Um, so I can use my Surface when I'm out with this and on my own inter- mm-hmm. on my own wireless. Then a couple other complaints, like one is 
the speaker is at the bottom mm -hmm. on this, but not underneath. So if my finger, like I typically hold my phone like this, mm -hmm. my finger could end up being blocking the speaker. Yeah. Um, now you had a similar problem with the S5 because the speaker was on the back. So if you put it face down, down, it muffled. The speaker would be muffled. Yeah. So, and then the other thing. I actually like this about it is the earphone jack is on the bottom of the phone now mm -hmm. where it was on the top in the S5. I liked it being on the top for when I was listening out of my pocket because it made sense to have the earphone at the top Yeah, for me, but it was on the opposite end of the charging cable. So I'd have a wire coming out of both sides, <laughs> like in my car when it's plugged in, right. charging and playing music through the stereo. Right. So now they're both on the same side. So I don't know if that's good or the bad. Little things. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then the other thing, it's it kind of broke Samsung's uh, mission statement in my mind, but this is completely sealed off, so I can't access the battery anymore. So Really? They've gone iPhone on me. So. <laughs> Maybe it's about time we switch to an iPhone. <sighs> nope, not doing that. Uh, Sarah really liked the rose gold iPhone, but I'm like, we're not doing that. So. <laughs> you didn't want her to have an iPhone? No. Because <laughs> I'm not going to have her have a different phone than me, because then I wouldn't be able to explain what's going on to, with it oh. to her. So It's just easier for us to have the same phone. Yeah. So. She didn't really want one. She doesn't care. She's yeah. just happy to have a good phone. <laughs> But that, they said that that's so that they can make it waterproof because you're supposed to be able to drop this in water. Oh. So all these like phones are like shatterproof, waterproof. Mm -hmm. Like you guys are sucky, you know, with your phones. Because <laughs> I mean, yeah. I don't do I've that. Never had any problem yeah. with that kind of yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I put a case on mine, and I don't drop it in water. So I've never had a case on my phones, and I've never shattered a screen. So. <laughs> I'm yeah, like, I don't need a case. Except my parents were telling me you need a case. I'm like, I've never shattered a smartphone in ten years that yeah. I've had them. So I have dropped them in water. <laughs> yes, Obviously. we know that. <laughs> so I'm excited about that feature. But yeah, I won't be taking this one rafting, even if it is supposedly waterproof. Mm -hmm. My so, lesson learned was buy a GoPro camera. Yeah, so that's what I'll be doing. Right. So. Um. Oh, my kids are going to say goodnight to me. No. Nope. Oh, no. Just Janie. Oh. Just what? Janie. Yeah. Only it was that time. Oh, okay. He <laughs> wants me to dig out his clothes that he decided he didn't want to wear now. He wants to look through. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh. Well. Yeah. Cool. Kids. Um, so I want to talk about role models. Okay. How, how, are, how important are role models to you? Do you have any in your life? What is a role model? <laughs> mm -hmm. I know growing up at church, I had a couple mm -hmm. that at the time, though, I didn't know they were role models. I just kind of thought they just took interest in me and just hung out with me. and mm -hmm. More like mentor. Mentor, yeah. Than role model. Yeah. But um, yeah, I don't, I don't know if I necessarily have any role models mm -hmm. today. I can't, I can't really think of somebody that I. I don't know. I guess we have to define what a role model is. Yeah. Somebody. Does it have to be somebody you regularly see? No. Or is it just somebody that you look up to and that you like a part of their life? Yeah, I think so. I think the difference between a mentor and a role model for me is a mentor has to be a relationship. There has to be a give and take there of mm. I'm talking to you about my life and you're advising me on it. Whereas a role model, I think you can have a role model and then not realize that you're a role, that okay. a role model for you. So it can be a celebrity. I think for us early on, Dave Ramsey was probably that role model. Oh, yeah. Um, we have entrepreneurial role models that we kind of look up to now. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that that's the difference is a role model is just somebody where you're like, I like this about them and I want to be like that mm -hmm. when I grow up kind of thing. So whereas a mentor is more that 
I'm really struggling through this. Can you advise me? What decision should I make? Hmm. So does that make sense? Yeah, that does. Um, so I guess we can talk about both role models and mentors. Mm -hmm. Um, do I have any in my life? Hmm. I think uh, Stephen King would be a role model to me. Mm -hmm. I just he just enjoys writing so much, and he just every time I read his stuff, I'm like, man, I gotta get writing again. And just he encourages me, mm -hmm. and he has no clue who I am. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, my coach is a role model for me. Um, I I think I've I've always had lots of role models, mm -hmm. people that I looked look up to, um, my father in law, my parents, mm -hmm. role models for different reasons, my coaches for me because I want to be a coach like she is someday, mm -hmm. um, and train really smart and strong athletes. Um, I don't know that I really have an entrepreneurial or business role model anymore. Hmm. And I have felt the absence of that hmm. in this whole process of figuring out what I want my business to be and shifting it towards powerlifting away from business and stuff. I think that part of that is just that I haven't, I don't really have anybody that I can look to and say, you have the lifestyle that hmm. I want. So. I'm kind of searching for it on my own. I've got some peers mm -hmm. that are kind of doing the same thing that we that I talk to, but nobody that I can really point to, like uh, um, who's the four hour work week guy, Tim um, Ferris, Tim Ferris, or something, and say where you're at. That's where I want to be. Hmm. So nobody really like that for a role model. Yeah, because I don't really know anybody that's doing what I want to be doing. You know. Yeah, you you have such a niche thing you're trying to do. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Everybody that I've looked at as a role model before, they could be role models because they were growing their business and they wanted to focus on their business. Mm -hmm. And so they were becoming better employers and you know, becoming better salespeople and you know, mm -hmm. getting better at pitching and stuff like that. And I'm just not interested in that, <laughs> that anymore. Yeah. I want to keep the customers I have, bring on a couple more occasionally as I need to, but focus all of my energy and attention on lifting, mm -hmm. where I have definite role models again. So, um. You've got, what about friends on your list, though, too? Yeah. And I kind of just said I have peers yeah peers in business yeah um, so i think that that is different than a role model um though you can have things that attract you to that friend mm -hmm. that you're like I, w I wish i was this like this friend is kind yeah of thing i have a friend who's a police officer mm -hmm. and he is so good at compartmentalizing mm -hmm. like his work with his like personal life I guess mm. like he doesn't let it get to him sometimes it does but sometimes he's just very good at like just separating himself mm -hmm. from that and that I think can be a good thing sometimes if you have a terrible bad day at work mm -hmm. like if say the daycares the kids are just acting up and just on my last nerve you all right? Yeah, jaws and, locking up. Oh, <laughs> yeah, rabies. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's, it's, I think it's good to separate bad emotions sometimes because mm. that can be discouraging. Mm -hmm. And he's really good at that. Mm. I don't know if I'd want that. No? To me, that whole idea of separating your life, compartmentalizing your life just reeks of... I hate my job. <laughs> right. And I want everything else to be okay. Yeah. So I'm just going to shut it all off. Yeah. 
Well, see, I know with kids, they can have a bad day, but yeah. then they come the next day and they're, yeah. they just had a bad day. And if I can, if I can understand that, mm -hmm. then I, that'll help me not go to bed thinking, oh, it's going to be a long week. Okay. So it's not so much compartmentalizing one thing from another. It's just kind of letting it's it go. Be letting it go. Yeah. It's not holding on so tightly to yeah. everything. Yeah. Kind of thing. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But yes, if you compartmentalize like what you were describing, yeah, it reeks of I hate my job. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> okay, I need 10 minutes to myself yeah. to breathe. And get Count ready. to 10. Okay. Life is okay again. Yeah. <laughs> that place is behind me yeah. on the way home. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, if you wanted to compartmentalize, then why did you quit the why job? Why did I that you quit? Hated? Yeah. It was training you to compartmentalize, I know. Charlie. Yeah. <laughs> now you're all integrated again. I know. Dang it. Now you have to figure out how to turn off work and turn on family life. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to compartmentalize, don't work from home. <laughs> no. <laughs> with your own wife and kids. Yeah. <laughs> nice. You can never escape. Yep. Yeah. But yeah, I think there are certain friends. I mean, there are things in you that I, I just look to and like, yeah, I want to have that attitude mm. or go after or have that passion for whatever mm -hmm. you know yeah i mean same in you i'm like man i wish i could focus on one thing like charlie can sometimes <laughs> so i can't i just yeah <laughs> i get too stressed out if there's too many options <laughs> mm -hmm. but i don't i don't know that that's so much role model as it is admirable traits i guess mm -hmm. it is a role model thing but yeah. the peer relationship is a little bit different than mm -hmm. a role model because a role model there's kind of that they've got this figured out kind of aspect to it mm -hmm. whereas a peer is kind of we're figuring this out at the same time mm -hmm. they're a little bit ahead of me <laughs> yeah or they 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 do better at this part I do better at this part. Mm -hmm. I think with a peer, there's a lot more of a seeing the faults also part of it. Right. Whereas a role model. They're you, indestructible. Yeah. You might not notice their faults yeah. or not. They never come up because they're not in that sphere of how they're a role model. Yeah. You know, if they're financially set, you might never ask like, what's their spiritual life like? Or if they're a, awesome power lifter you might not ever ask like how many times have they been divorced kind of things <laughs> like that right they just never come up in that that yeah. sphere for them right i think that's the danger of role models though too is is when you do completely ignore the faults and forget that they're humans yeah they're not perfect and you uphold you hold them up to this like perfect standard and mm -hmm. when they fail at that and you're like oh my god you, yeah you suck as a human being <laughs> yeah you know the whole don't meet your heroes kind yeah of, right kind of right. thing <laughs> um that's like when they move from becoming role models to becoming idols mm -hmm. and you're just like you know that you idolize them and you're like man when i'm as rich as dave ramsey then the whole world is gonna like be figured out for me and everything's gonna be set <laughs> And then you hear that Dave Ramsey has, you know, struggles or something like that, or an employee quits from there or yeah. something. And you're like, what? Yeah. Well, it's that's like, that's the thing. Um, he has trouble. You know, he yeah. he struggles as an employer too. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, because I just recently f heard about my one of my role models or mentors was um, they're like extremely depressed now. Mm. I found out, and they're just. He's trying to figure out life, and I'm like, wow, yeah. they are human. Yeah. <laughs> and I didn't understand that when I was 14, 15 years old. Yeah. But they're a normal man, you know. Mm -hmm. That's rough. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> it can shake everything in you. Yeah, because it's like, so what kind of advice did you give me? Yeah. What You know, did, did that mean anything to me? And it, the truth is it, it did at the time, yeah. you know, but they're just human. For me, um, the end of my junior year, the beginning of my senior year, my youth pastor up and moved to Albania to the missions field. And that was a powerful shaking of my foundations kind of <laughs> moment for me. Yeah. I'm like that. I think we've talked about it on an, ev uh, on an older episode, how everybody leaves me. Yes. <laughs> that uh, was yeah. like one of the yeah. earliest. No, everybody leaves me. That one. <laughs> 
Um, but some, something similar happened a couple of years ago when our, the pastor of our previous church left. Mm. It w- didn't shake me as much because I knew that's what pastors. That's what happens. I'm, yeah. I'm ready for people to leave me at this point. <laughs> yeah. um, the only one that would ever surprise me would be my wife at this point. <laughs> Everybody else I hold on loosely enough. Yeah. And expect it's coming. I'm not moving, man. I know you say that, but <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> I know you say that. <laughs> oh, I'm not kidding. <laughs> but for for Jamie, when he left, I know that there were people in the church who were not Christians before they ever were under his teaching. And for like a Christian to have your pastor leave, and you're just like, or even worse, your pastor, you know, walks away, or you know reveals like some huge sin or something right, like right. that you can just like start to question like what's my faith based on right. when this person yeah who was the only pastor i've ever known yeah is gone now yeah it's like is there anything left there <laughs> yeah well the uh the pastor who married me and janie he got divorced married somebody else yeah <laughs> and left his church and what does that mean for your marriage nothing no nothing yeah but I mean, you can think yeah, those things. It's like, You're just like, my entire marriage is a sham <laughs> because his crumbled. Yeah. So, which but, funny, I met that guy at my old church was playing a softball game, and I just went to visit, and he was sitting next to me, but I, I, I couldn't remember who he was because it was like eight years prior, and I just we started talking and. And then when I figured out, I was, and we we said, "Oh yeah, yeah, you married us." Wow. It was it was weird, hmm. but he seemed happy, you know. So mm-hmm. I don't I don't know all the ins and outs, you yeah. know. I know people divorce, and it happens. Humans divorce. Role models <laughs> are indestructible. Divorces. They don't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. But I think that that's the same thing as that I, that idolizing thing is. Yeah. You know, we revealed when that role model gets shaken, we reveal if they were a role model or if we were expecting them mm-hmm. to be more than they ever could be. Yeah. So we, I I can't be the foundation. My marriage with Sarah can't be the foundation that anybody else's marriage is based on. Right. My financial health, even as a podcaster who talks about personal <laughs> finance, I cannot be the sole foundation that your listener out there right your financial health is built on i can be your role model and you can strive to achieve what we've achieved and more but you know if i cave and get a credit card (laughs) i hope it doesn't send any of you spiraling into depression and (laughs) drugs and alcohol because barrett got a credit card (laughs) so i won't just like charlie says he won't move away i won't you say that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that that Capital One Platinum, man. 1.5 cash back. Mm-hmm. No. I, Three free trips around the world. Yeah. How can you turn that down? Yeah. <laughs> I, we talked about how uh, comedians felt like they always had to be funny in public, yeah. you know, and that can be just very, such a weight on your shoulders. Yeah. Because the minute you don't say a joke, they're like, mm-hmm. something's wrong. What is yep. wrong? You know? George Lucas has to do everything perfect with his property that he created. Mm-hmm. George R.R. R. Martin is not allowed to write anything other than Game of Thrones books. Nope. Um, yeah. Yeah, but Walking Dead guy. Can't um, do anything else other than that. Yeah. So. If he if he does something other than zombies, he's mm-hmm. being a terrible, you know, Creator. artist. Yep. So it's like when you get to that point, then the thing kind of dictates dictates your life yeah. in a way does kind of take over you know i mean at some point you couldn't just say don't use credit and then be doing it secretly because eventually you'll get you found to out superstar level and people will find that out yeah there's all sorts of smear stories out there about dave Ramsey yeah trying to tear him down and yeah say, see he's a fraud yeah there's no possible way he could have paid cash for, for his six, house six million dollar yeah. house that he built and and yeah, I read that, and he did. Mm-hmm. Like somebody found the deed or something or something. Yeah, he, he says on his show all the time, he's like, you know, 
people go into appliance stores and they're like, oh, yeah, I know Dave Ramsey. He was just in here and he <laughs> used store credit the week before you did. Yeah. So he have, he endorses our store credit program or, you know, he used a credit card. You can, too. Yeah. Stuff like that. Yeah. So they want there are people out there that want to tear down those role models or sh- reveal their hypocrisy. Mm-hmm. And I think the only way you can avoid that is to not be hypocritical as much as possible. Yeah. And then to just be honest and say, look, I am human. Yeah. Still. So. Yeah. I tell uh, my daycare kids not to complain. Mm-hmm. So it's keeping me on my on my A game, you mm-hmm. know. Yeah. I'm like, I can't ever say, man, it's so hot out here. Mm-hmm. I can't say that anymore. Mm-hmm. I just have to get Mr. some water. Mr. Charlie's complaining. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> <laughs> do they do they call you Mr. Charlie? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Nice. I've already started calling them by the wrong names cuz I'm like, "Who are you?" Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, sorry. Man. <laughs> Once you turn 35, man, your brain <laughs> and your body. I actually hurt myself 2 days ago. I was trying to cuz I want to come to your thing on Sunday. Mhm. Squats and well, this is that, that happened 2 weeks ago, mm-hmm. but you all know what we're doing here. Mm-hmm. But uh I started benching like 160 pounds just straight out i hadn't done it in a while and i was doing it and then that night this right here is killing me like (sighs) nice yeah you're getting old yeah i've got aches all over yes my wrist hurts possible tendonitis in my ankle my back hurts from deadlifting today (laughs) join the party yeah man the republican party (laughs) psych (laughs) talk about role models and uh, hypocrisy no, bernie kidding. sanders at one point said he didn't endorse hillary and now he's behind her i'm like <laughs> what happened last what happened two months ago i don't mm. get it yep. nothing that that's what helped cements in my mind that nothing is going to change in this country because they're <laughs> all it's all going to be the same like nothing changes yep. hey there's principles and then there's never trump uh, and some principles have to take a back seat. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> nerd talk. Sure. This one is just a nerdful toss up. So whatever is on your mind about, um, whatever's out there. Yeah. Okay. Let's well, talk about that Nintendo thing, huh? Oh man, that looked pretty cool. Yeah. So tell me a- about it. I only saw a picture of it. I know it fits in your hand. Yeah, it fits in your hand. It's kind of like a. I believe it's like a hard drive in there. Is it a Raspberry Pi computer yeah, system? Yeah, something like that. Okay. And it comes with 30 Nintendo games. Mm-hmm. And the front ports use like the Wii controller yeah, port. I saw that. Yeah. And there's more games coming out. Is it going to be like a classic Nintendo controller though? Yeah. Even though the connection's different? Mm-hmm. And it's going to be like not your old Nintendo cartridges. It's going to have to be something smaller to, what? Uh, to expand on the heart, on the games. Oh, that yeah. Gonna, or are they going to be downloaded? Maybe downloaded. That's what I'm thinking. Okay, so I don't have to blow on cartridges again nope. and go through all that. Hey, Ma. Fix the vertical tracking yeah. on my TV. Put in <laughs> two cartridges uh-huh. in the thing to kind of just steady it. <laughs> yep. It's not going to go through the AV jacks in no. the back of my TV that it doesn't have anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what are those? Nintendo Red, white, and yellow, man. HDMI. This yeah. is amazing. <laughs> uh-huh. Although I don't know what HDMI would look like on 8 bit. It would just look like 8 bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Probably see like black bars on the side of your TV or whatever because it can only do your like. Your TV is too big for this game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've never seen Mega Man so big and pixelated. Mm. Nice. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. that is cool. Um, Do you not? Know, is there a price point? On Sixty it yet? bucks. Okay. Yeah, but I have all the ROM, Nintendo ROMs. Yeah. So, eh. It would just be the, it's the nostalgia point, but yeah, and the legal. It would. Uh, <laughs> it's yeah, legal, I mean, and it's the ability to play it simply on your TV instead of on your computer. Mm-hmm. So, when they come out with the SNES one. I'd yeah. be on board for that. Not be, maybe not necessarily the Nintendo. Yeah. So You need me, Janie? <laughs> Internet's not working. Oh, it's not? Okay. Is it gonna mess you guys up? No, no. We're not on the internet. No. I taught my wife how to reset the internet. Nice. Count thirty. Yep. <laughs> I'm the jack of all trades lately. Oh yeah. 
Yeah. So anyway, um, mobile gaming seems to be taking off more so now, mm-hmm. and like the games are free, but it's they make their money off the in-game purchases. Yeah, it's just such a weird economy, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. What else are you playing on your phone? Um, Besides Pokemon, Hearthstone. When I when I'm out and about, mm-hmm. but usually that's PC. Yeah, I was gonna say you play that on the PC. So. Yeah, is it browser based on the PC? No, it's its own app. So it's its own. It's not browser based. It's just its own game. It goes into Battle.net. Okay. Yeah. But it's different than the iTunes version that you can play on your phone. What, Hearthstone? Yeah. Is it different? That's what I'm asking. Uh, Oh. Because unless you're using, like, an emulator on your computer, it's not the actual iTunes app that you're playing on your computer, right? What? You're talking about Hearthstone? Yeah. Well, how's the gameplay different on your phone versus on the PC, or is it just a bigger screen? That you it's prefer? just a bigger screen, oh, okay. and the layout is a little different. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. That's going to be another thing I want to do, though, when I have more free time, is stream and make money oh, yeah. off of it. Doing Twitch. Yeah. Twitch TV. Yeah. But I only have like two viewers. <laughs> I saw uh, there's a YouTube channel of powerlifters. I guess they're using Twitch mm-hmm. to comment yeah. on their lifting videos mm-hmm. that they have. <laughs> yeah, Twitch is everybody's using it for everything. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm just like man, you set up a camera in the gym and do all your stuff in front of the camera. Then you go home and you talk about what you did uh-huh. in the gym. Yeah, you commentate on it. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't sound like your cup of tea. No, not for me. <laughs> oh, you just want to be done with it after you've lifted. I don't know. I mean, I'd do instructional videos, but yeah, I got bored really quick listening to them talk about. It was kind of like listening to a commentator track of a of a DVD or something. Oh yeah, like that. in this scene, they wanted to talk <laughs> about this, but he improvised here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I wasn't that interested. Yeah. But, play a couple other games on my phone though. I've got. The Walking Dead. Mm -hmm. I played that for a while. I did Clash of Clans for like a year and a half or something until I completely lost interest in that one. Yeah, I remember. So, trying to think what else I'm playing right now. Uh, I was playing a hexagon puzzle one where it's got all these weird shapes and you have to like put them into the puzzle. I downloaded Sudoku while I was out in Tahoe because I haven't played that in years. I'm not good at that game. I I just can't get into it yeah i just uh that one was fun i haven't like i said i haven't played that in years i taught my parents how to play it yeah i don't know how many years ago like four or six years ago or something like that i do love me some mahjong though yeah mahjong's fun Hmm. you ever play that one i did when it was like one of the only pc games (laughs) that i had when it came free on uh (laughs) windows exactly 95 (laughs) or 3.1 tile matching game fun yeah better than Minecraft right yeah. now. You can only play free sell so many times. Mm-hmm. So. But yeah, like we talked about before, I want to see more of this virtual gaming, vir- virtual reality Yeah, real life take off. going out. I saw there was a, was it a Kickstarter or something? Maybe it's already out there, but it was like a first person shooter virtual oh reality Oh my game. gosh. And I'm like, yeah, no, nothing can go wrong <laughs> no. with this at all. No. <laughs> It's like, let's run around the streets shooting each other in the face and not see somebody get shot or real. defended against yeah. in real life by somebody who thinks that they're getting charged at by an assault. Oh. It's like, with all the gun problems that we have going on right now, you want to get people off of their couches <laughs> yeah. out into public? <laughs> no. Playing a gun game? <laughs> what was that Seinfeld where he was like against guns and he was like, no, no guns. Too many misunderstandings yeah. or something. That would be the story there. <laughs> yeah. So. But let's do like a virtual reality football game or something where we run around. I don't really yeah. care. I've already lost interest. Yeah. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> I forgot you hate football. <laughs> there, there was, 
I think I said it before. There was a um, a fantasy movie rating game, and it was like fantasy football. So what you did was you rate you you had you got like twenty million and you know credits on your account, mm-hmm. and then you would bet on which movies would be top in the box office, like top one or two or three, mm. and then you would. It played just like fantasy football, but you mm-hmm. guessed on the movies. So you'd like study directors and actors yeah. and stuff and figure out what their box office yeah. track record yeah. had been. And, and if one had like a flu virus, you sub in another director. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. But that's a real thing. A, a couple huh. guys are putting it together. Hmm. Hey, if it's got a cool use, user interface, I could be on board with that, I yeah. guess. So. Nice. Yeah. Fantasy powerlifting. Fantasy. There you go. I'm gonna put together my world, my team for worlds. So. Is there? Do you know that many powerlifters to put a team together? Uh, if there was a game involved with it, I could do that much research. <laughs> oh. But yeah, there are a couple thousand. Okay. Like, field. So. <laughs> nice. Um. Well. A couple weeks ago, there was Evo, which is the equivalent of the Super Bowl for Street Fighter. Oh, yeah. So, but since we're recording it pre, I don't know who won yet. <laughs> so, so it hasn't happened. It yet. hasn't happened yet so as a of today. Weeks ago means it's coming up this weekend. Yes. <laughs> it's coming. Yeah, it's this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Okay. But when you all hear this, it's already It'll going to happen. Past. Yes. Predictions? No, I'm yeah. just kidding. <laughs> Daigo Umahara. He's my number one guy. Japan. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, the J- Japanese, they are so... They have no game. Because there was a tournament a couple weeks ago, and they made it into like a uh, wrestling thing. They mm-hmm. put a wrestling rink, and they called people in to play. The Japanese players were just had no game. They just walked down the aisle... You know, but if it was like a white American guy, they would just bust up in there. Ah. <laughs> it's like you Japanese, you guys are so like isolated. Like mm-hmm. keep to yourself. It's just weird mm. how the culture is. So cool. Yeah. So is there somewhere you can watch that this weekend that you'll be watching that? Twitch TV. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yep. So yeah, that's what I got. I'm just looking forward to the weekend. Um, I got one. Yeah. I don't know that you're going to know anything I'm talking about. Okay. But you just talked about Street Fighter. So okay. I'll throw this one out there. Nah, we're all friends. Did it's, you do? I invest um, in you. You invest in me. <laughs> Did you ever play tabletop wargaming like Warhammer 40k? Uh-uh. Anything like that? It was interesting to me. I just never knew anybody else that could to play get it you with. into. Right. Yeah. So Phil got me into it six or seven years ago not warhammer 40k i played that one yeah. when i was a kid yeah um but he got me into another one from privateer press which is another company that came out with one called war machine back in 2003 um so we played it like one summer we played a game weekly uh every the same night every single week right before Right before he bought a house, and right before I had my second kid, uh-huh. <laughs> so then we dropped off. Then after you just, that. yeah. Um, but they've just rebooted their system for the third time this month, and so I'd already sold off all my armies and got out of it completely uh-huh. about a year and a half ago. I stopped even looking at the website and just sold everything. But the reboot has me interested in it again that's so, awesome yeah so i just got uh it just came out june 29th mm-hmm. um so i just bought two starter armies and the rule book and phil and i are gonna get started playing again but even if phil can't play um or we can't align our schedules i bought two armies so okay. i try and teach my kids how to okay. play too so. i'll get in there with that yeah. i'll get in with you I'll, yeah. I'll buy some stuff and we'll play. You can come on over. Yeah. We'll teach you how to play. Yeah. So I've got three army, or I've got two armies. Phil's got one. I think he used to have two, but I think he sold off one of his. Where do you go online? 
It's not online. Right? Oh, it's a tabletop game, so we yeah. play in his parents' basement. Oh. But um, you gotta buy stuff. Yeah. So where do you go to buy the stuff? I buy it online. Oh, okay. Is that what you meant? Yeah, that's word? what I meant. <laughs> um, I just bought the stuff from Amazon. Oh, okay. That's where I got it. There's a whole secondary market, um, Barter Town, which is a trading mm-hmm. site for miniatures. Um, but it's it's pretty fun. Um, the problem we ran into back then was there really wasn't a scene for it mm-hmm. um, when comics md used to be out yeah. back a keek you used to be able to go there and pick up an occasional game and then that guy moved his shop down to leonard town mm. and he's we played a couple times down there but it seemed like most of the scene was in south st mary's and yeah south calvert kind of thing yeah because so. there's that place high tide games mm-hmm. in uh california maryland they oh, have okay. it's all board games yeah yeah so Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, when uh, Phil and I are going to get together about the time this comes out, end of June, end of July, I've got to <laughs> assemble my miniatures now. Um, <laughs> I don't bother with painting anymore. I've lost way too many years of my life painting miniatures, <laughs> stressing out over paint schemes and stuff. So, Are you, were, are you a perfectionist when it yes. comes to the painting? When I spend 10 or 12 hours on one model, <laughs> oh, it's gosh. not scalable. Oh, so, man. I can't do that. And I've... Back when I was a kid, I used to love building terrain for these things, too. Uh-huh. So I, I would love to spend that much time building terrain. Yeah. Because that's fun for me. Yeah. But painting tiny little models with a tiny little brush, it's just nerve-wracking. Phil's really good at it. His army's almost largely painted. Wow. So my, my entire army, I think I had one completed model out of dozens and okay. dozens of models of them. So. I know a couple of people at my church that play board games. I might talk to them about this. Yeah. See if they got if they got stuff going on too. Cool. Yeah. Love to have you over and teach yeah. you how to play. So yeah. You can borrow one of my armies and, and learn. Okay. So. I've I've never got in. I never played Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. I never played that. I still have never done a Dungeons and Dragons campaign. Either, yeah. So. I've played games based off the mm-hmm. rules but never the actual game an, an actual yeah. rpg yeah yep same here so i've listened to podcasts about it the longest podcast i've ever listened to i'm still listening to it they've been on for 350 something episodes uh-huh. and it's largely a role-playing game podcast that yeah. talks about a bunch of other stuff too yeah yeah and I'm listening, and I know so much about it, <laughs> but I've never actually had somebody knowledgeable enough yeah. as a game master to sit down and say, hey, I'm going to run a campaign yeah. for newbies. Do you want to yeah. come try it out? I'd love to. That'd be awesome. The closest I ever got, there was this one guy who was going to our church a couple years ago, and he was a game master, and his two kids played also, and that was the closest I ever got to actually being able to run a game. Yeah. But but then they moved to Pittsburgh and that disappeared. So they left me too. No, I'm just kidding. Oh. I wasn't torn up about that one. <laughs> that is true. People leave. Yep. It never surprises me anymore. So that's the thing I'm really excited about. So awesome. It's a fantastic game. I loved it. Um, I loved mostly that Phil was on the other end of the table with me and we bonded really well playing that. That's um, awesome. Yeah, and it's fun because I was at work at the time. He was at work, so we'd always be sending emails to each other. And <laughs> hey, check out this army list. What do you think about yeah, it? Yeah, that's awesome. Like that. I like doing that. Yeah. <laughs> so, yep. It's a uh, kind of got the magic slash Pokemon collectible card game deck builder aspect to it too, because uh-huh. it uses cards and models. Okay. So it's pretty fun. Awesome. Yeah. I will keep you in mind when I have you out. Nice. So. I'll do it. Sweet. Got anything else? No. Let's go catch some Pokemon. Then. Yes. Wrap this up. All right. Where, <laughs> so where can people find you? I'm on Instagram at CP underscore EH. I also blog daily about powerlifting if you're interested on BarrettYoung.com slash Seeking Elite. Or just find the link from the main page, BarrettYoung.com. Nice. And I'm on Twitter at Charchangs. I'm on Facebook and... Our website is hadoukendet.com, and don't forget to head on over to patreon.com slash where you can toss us a couple bucks and keep the show going.